Usually when people make a game in Unity, they make it here in the scene view. But can you make a game in the Unity editor? Short answer, yes, but let's pause and backtrack. So as per usual, my goal is to learn game development piece by piece. So the next challenge I have for myself is to learn how to make custom editors so that I can make useful tools and improve on my development workflow. I actually had a couple tools already that benefited many of you, like my procedural placement generator. I did this by watching part of Legend's video where he talks about Legend to make trees spawn depending on the height of the terrain and my fall off map. So I think it would be really cool going forward if I could pair my tools with custom editors. All right, let's get straight into the video. There's only a couple of videos I watched to learn how to create custom editors. This first one was made by Matt from Game Dev Guide. This one taught me the basics of drawing properties and grouping them together. Then secondly, I watched a playlist by Sebastian Lake on how to create a custom gradient editor. And this is where I really got the idea that it might be possible to create a game in the Unity editor. In Sebastian's playlist, he shows us how to draw a colored box and drag it around with our mouse. So let's see if we can figure out the rest of the building blocks to build an actual game. First thing I did was create a new editor window. Then I put together a couple experiments to test out mouse events. So I have a box on the left that will alternate its color every time I click on it. And the box on the right should also turn red anytime my mouse hovers over it. And this is where I ran into my first big problem. The box on the right was not turning red, even though my code looked perfectly fine. Oh, come on! It's honestly embarrassing how long I spent trying to figure this out. But to save you hours of my headache, in order to receive mouse move events, you have to set this once mouse move property to true. And now everything works as expected. Next thing I did was to see if I could drag the box around. This was no problem since Sebastian had already taught us this in his tutorials. Then I added some code to keep the box within the bounds. And lastly, I tried to figure out how to check if two boxes are intersecting. This is actually pretty simple. The solution to this is to check if the boxes are not intersecting. So the first thing you check is if the bottom of the first box is above the top of the second box, or if the left side of the first box is to the right of the right side of the second box, and etc. This turns into one big nice if statement, and the name for the solution is called Axis Aligned Founding Box Collision, or AABB Collision. The last thing I needed to figure out is how am I going to do my game updates. Since this is an editor script, we do not have access to a time.delta time like we do in the model behaviors. Surprisingly though, we still do have an update function that gets called for every frame in Unity. So what I can do is use the built-in system library to grab the current time, and by keeping track of the previous time, we can find the difference between the two times and this will give me a makeshift delta time. I then took this knowledge and spent a lot of time creating my own game engine. This could honestly be a whole video of its own, so I won't go into too much detail about it here, but basically I can set the desired frame rate for both my render and update calls. You can imagine that the higher my frame rate is, the more precise the game will run, and I shouldn't have to explain the benefits of a higher render frame rate. Now to show the game engine in action, I put together this little particle simulator. Here we can see how changing the frame rate sliders can have an effect on the simulation. Also, it's good to know that the Unity editor can handle thousands of particles. Really quickly, let's go over the new setup. I created an interface so that for any game that I want to make, I just need to create a new class that inherits from this interface. Then the editor script should never really have to change since its purpose is to run games that adhere to this interface. You can imagine my editor window like being a Game Boy Advance and that all the games I make for it are like game cartridges that can be inserted into the console. We now have all the building blocks in place to make a game in the Unity editor, so give me some time and let's see what I can come up with. Here's the moment we've all been waiting for. Is it possible to make a game in the Unity editor? So to open up the console, you go up here to the window tab and then you click on experiment window for lack of a better name. And here's the console. Um, you can either play the game here or you can dock it to the side to make it look like it's part of the inspector. But I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna leave it right here in the middle. So the three games I made are Pong, um, this little Starfield simulation and Flappy Bird. I thought Pong was a cool game since it's pretty simple and combines all of the building blocks that we had to figure out. Basically I came up with the idea of having a target that you need to hit and every time you hit the target the score will go up and the ball will get faster. One of the cool things about this game is that depending on where the ball hits the paddle will determine what angle the ball will reflect. So if the ball hits the left side of the paddle the ball will go more left or if the ball hits the middle the ball will go straight up and if the ball hits the right side then the ball will go more towards the right. This allows the player to have a bit more accuracy and added a lot of fun to the game. The second game I made is more of a visualizer. Here I just wanted to play with 3D projection. The cool thing about this one is the particles react to your mouse position. So the Y position of my mouse would determine the speed of the particles and the X position would determine the direction of the particles. It was interesting to see that this still worked when my mouse leaves the editor window. Lastly, I decided to make the game Flappy Bird. So this works exactly the way you expect. If your bird falls to the ground, you die. If your bird hits one of the pipes, you die. And every time your bird makes it through one of the pipes, your score will go up. 
This was surprisingly very nostalgic and brought back some habits that I forgot I even liked to do. Like for example, at the start of every match, I'd always fly really high, then at the last second I'd fall to my death until the right spot for me to clear the pipes. If you haven't noticed, since, you know, this game looks 100% like the original, all of the assets were drawn by yours truly. Unfortunately, I did have one problem with this game and that was the black box around the bird. I guess this is an issue with drawing textures in the editor because even though I did draw all the sprites with transparency and I made sure to have this box checked on the texture, the editor did not want to keep this transparency. Literally, as soon as I finished editing this video, I figured out how to fix this bug. So the problem was I was using editor GUI.draw preview texture to draw my sprites, but if I switch to GUI.draw texture, now the editor will draw with transparency. And since we're adding a bit more polish, I changed the font to be more arcadey. Then I animated the bird with the wings down for that. And now the project feels a bit more complete. So that wraps up this project. I definitely feel a lot more comfortable now building my own custom editors. And as always, if you have any ideas for the next project, please let me know. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.